Good day YouTube, my name is Dan and welcome to another episode of CryptoLine. It's been a while since I jumped on and I was explaining on our Telegram group chat that recently I found a new job. It's a promotion and a good thing for me, but it also means that for the next few weeks I'll be busier at work until I find my feet. But nonetheless, I will still be doing reviews and putting out videos, just not as frequent as before. It also means that I will be more selective to bring you only the projects that I'm really excited about. And talking about being excited, today I wanted to talk to you about Zpin and why I'm personally quite excited about investing into Zpin right now. If you would like to learn more about Zpin, keep watching this video. Zpin describes itself as a distributed new economy for the creative industry. What is the creative industry? The creative industry is monetizing anything that is creative content. So you might be an artist, you might do good paintings or record good music, or you might be a technological whiz who can write good programs, or even a group of people who are working on an original project to create a game or educational series. Any content that is original of yours can be taken and sold or hired out to others to earn money. That process of earning money from your original creation is called creative industry. A lot of people are not aware of how big the creative industry really is. Currently, per annum, the creative industry brings in a revenue of almost $2.5 trillion. This is not millions or billions, but trillions. That's almost 10 times the current market cap of the entire cryptocurrency market. It's more than the general revenue of some countries, and this huge market is the target field of Zpin. Zpin is a project that aims to help creative creators monetize their creation. Whether it's a book or a song or a game, Zpin will be the one-stop shop that will provide everything. The financial services, the accounting services, the copyright services, basically everything a content creator needs to launch a successful operation. The entire infrastructure, the copyright services, etc. will run on a tokenized ecosystem and use blockchain technology such as smart contracts to carry out their business. The combination of blockchain technology with the creative industry is then essentially what the Zpin platform or project is all about. Zpin comes from a mother company called Arting365 Media, which is a China-based creative content company that has been around for over 15 years with over 1.2 current million users. 1.2 million users, that's a lot. They have also done collaborations with big companies like DreamWorks. And Zpin is not just a branch of Arting365 because if they were just a branch, it would mean that the staff who are running Zpin would be different from the staff in uh, Arting365. However, in this case, the staff don't just oversee the project. The very same staff that are running Arting365 or have been running Arting365 for over 15 years is the very same staff who are involved in the Zpin projects. So this is a team with a lot of experience who have already proven that they can build a successful company in this market. In terms of their technology, Zpin will have its own blockchain called the Zpin chain. This is part of the e NEO ecosystem, which in my opinion, the NEO ecosystem is one of the best ecosystems in the crypto space currently. Subsequent projects that want to use Zpin services, example, if I want to launch a game on Zpin, I will, will have to be built on Zpin as a decentralized app or dApp. Now, the blockchain itself is only the foundational technology for content creators to launch or build their project. In order to provide additional services, so not just the foundation to build the project, but also the services that the project will need as a original content, uh, example, the copyright services and more, Zpin will then also launch its own decentralized apps to provide these services. So, so far, they have already announced nine apps that they are creating or have created to provide services for the industry. Now, all of these native apps or services will use the ZPT or Zpin token. So, for example, if a user uses the copyright service that's called ZWrites, they will have to pay in Z, Z, uh, ZPT tokens. If they use the ZTalent service to recruit team members, they will again pay for it in ZPT tokens. So, not only does this project use the ZPT tokens for the platform itself, which is the way that most platforms, example, Ethereum or NEO, um, 
ensures or create token use. Zpin will have token use that way, but in addition to just the platform itself, Zpin will also have nine dApps that will provide essential services to their users, which will also use ZPT tokens. And the nine dApps is really only the starting. In the future, they plan to release even more dApps to provide more services for the users over time. So all this means that there's a lot of token use case, which is great for token investors. Now, I just want to run through a couple of the native dApps or services that they will be uh, providing on the platform so that you can get a feel of how important these features are to a content creator. The first service they will offer is crowdfunding service, and this is offered through the decentralized app called ZFund. For those who don't know what crowdfunding is, every new project needs capital to create the content to pay the legal fees, etc. Crowdfunding is the process where an upcoming project can raise funds from early investors who believe in the project. And in return for donating or investing into the project early, early users will get some benefits or advantages. Crowdfunding services, for example, Kickstarter at the moment is very popular. And even other blockchain projects like Loom are using Kickstarter. So Loom, for example, is another blockchain platform. And their upcoming crypto zombie game is currently using Kickstarter to raise funds for the project. So in their example, people who pledge a donation to um, crypto zombies will get a special access to certain features like the beta testing and more. Loom, as I mentioned before, is a blockchain platform in itself. It's a second layer platform solution for Ethereum that specializes in creating crypto games. So they're sort of like the Ethereum competitor to Zpin. Even though they are a platform that specializes in creating blockchain games, Loom as a platform doesn't have a crowdfunding service and they themselves have to go off the blockchain to a non-blockchain service like Kickstarter to fundraise. So there's nothing wrong with Loom. Loom is a great project. But I just wanted to use this example to show you the difference between a good project that is being built from scratch versus another good project like Zpin who already has 15 years of experience in the field and is very aware of exactly what their users need. So crowdfunding is a much needed service for new projects to raise capital and Zpin is offering that service through the dApp called Zfund and of course it will use ZPT tokens as the fundraising currency. This will be a very attractive feature as the Zpin community grows because like any platform, when you build an app on Zpin, you immediately have the attention of all the Zpin token holders. So this will be tens and thousands of tokens. Uh, as opposed to launching independently on a platform like Kickstarter, where you would then have to go and market your product and raise awareness for your new project from scratch. Whereas if you build on Zpin, you already have the crowd fundraiser um, facilities available for you and you already have an interested investor crowd immediately. That's why this is going to be such an attractive feature. Another service or dApp that they will be building is called ZWrites. And ZWrites is a dApp that will provide the service for copywriting the creator's content. Copywriting is a pretty self-explanatory um, service and I'm sure everyone can appreciate how important this service is. The thing is this, in the blockchain space, I've seen other projects like Poet, which uh, specialize in providing copyright service. I've also seen other platforms like Loom, Chimera, Engine that allow content creators to build original content on their platform. But as common sense as it sounds, there is no other project that combines the two together, that combines content creation with copyright services together. Zpin is the first blockchain project where I see everything, all these uh, services and more coming together. It's a platform to build your app, but it also provides all the necessary services needed to make that project work practically. So many times in blockchain, we see a project boast about its technical prowess. It, they boast about their transaction speed, their throughput, etc. And those features that are often boasted are very technical because the people behind the project are very technical people like coders and developers. But what we keep saying on this channel when we review projects like VChain, which has tailor-made enterprise features, and now Zpin, which has tailor-made creative industry features, is that when it comes to mass adoption, mass adoption of the technology, the people on 
the, the businesses who are actually going to use the platform aren't going to base their decision to use the platform based on technical details like throughput or latency alone. They are also going to want to look at utilities offered by the platform and its ability to cater for their specific needs. That's why platforms like Zpin, who are very thoughtful about including specific features catered to their niche clientele, will do very well in the longer term compared to the generic platforms. Other dApps and services um, that the platform will offer includes ZSure Asset Insurance, which creates and uses ZPIN tokens as a medium of exchange on an embedded smart contract, ZProof, which is used to proof of copyright without revealing the copyright contents, and ZTalents, which facilitates a recruitment service and more. There will be a total of nine essential services, which are highlighted for now, and as we mentioned before, in the future, they plan to release even more dApps. The truth is I've been wanting to do a Z-Pin review for some time now, but the reason I've been holding off on doing this review is because their mainnet is due to be launched in August of next month and I've been waiting for an updated white paper that will be released. The last version of their white paper was at the end of 2017, so it's quite dated and they have a lot of changes that have already taken place. So that's why I've been holding off on this project review, hoping to get more information about mainnet launch before doing the review. Now last night, less than 24 hours ago, Zpin released an important piece of information about their upcoming mainnet or blockchain structure. And the big news is that they will be using a second currency called the Gala currency. So this is a this is big news. It doesn't give us all the information we need yet, but it does give us a big picture of where this project will be headed going into mainnet. And I feel that this information is potentially time sensitive to some degree because of the very unique low pricing of the Zpin token right now, which I will talk about later. So for those reasons, I decided that today will be the day to do the Zpin review. Now, as many of you uh, will know, Zpin some time ago, a couple of months ago, they launched a crypto game called Crypto Galaxy. The game is a game that is actually working really well and it's a working game where you can buy planets or you can buy miners who will mine for cryptocurrency on the planet. And as you mine more, you can buy more or you can earn more Gala tokens and then you can buy better miners who will mine even faster. So it's basically a mining game. Now, Zpin did hints before that Crypto Galaxy was going to be more than just a game. It was a gamertized version of the entire Zpin system. So we knew that the game was going to be significant, but we were unsure of how it would all work together until now. So the article that was released last night explained that at mainnet launch, the Zpin platform will consist of not one, but two different blockchains. It will consist of the Zpin chain as well as the Galaxy chain. The reason for having two chains is to ensure that there is speed and security in the network. Zpin chain will process the business transactions of the dApps, whereas the Galaxy chain will, pro um, will process the transactions, the actual currency uh, movement. Zpin chain will have less nodes than the Galaxy chain so that they can um, more efficiently process the business transactions. So Crypto Galaxy then becomes more than just a game because Crypto Galaxy is where um, Gala tokens are minted and created. So what will happen is that the planets where people are now mining for their cryptocurrency, those planets will act as the network nodes and the mining power on the planet will go to helping the network to reach consensus. So the mining on the node becomes the mining of the system and that's how tokens are minted and rewards are distributed. In addition, there will also be this synergy between ZPT tokens and Gala tokens. So users can stake ZPT tokens in the in-game wallet to produce Gala tokens. So it's like NEO and GAS, except that you'll be practically getting into NEO at 30 cents. Or if a user own a planet, they could even lock in ZPT tokens on the higher stake model um, to increase the yield of mining Gala from that planet. This will also improve the resale value of the planet. So in the next game update, planets, which are the, like the nodes of the system, will be tradable with tokens. So I think that this is really smart because this means that there is only a limited number of nodes and not everyone who has tokens can be a node. To be a node, you literally need to buy a planet and this is going to inflate the prices of the planets. 
And there are also plans for master nodes, which will again be planet based, but the details of the master nodes will be released um, soon. I love this concept of gamifying the mining and staking process. Firstly, it makes it fun, but it also makes it easy to understand the process and easy to achieve. Finally, by gamifying the whole process, they can limit the number of planets or nodes and manage the inflation accordingly. Now, currently, the rate of the planet release is already very high in demand, and every new planet that is released gets snatched up within seconds. Furthermore, there is also a very high demand already for Gala tokens, even in the current game before this announcement, because people need Gala tokens to buy planets and new diggers. And that demand that is uh, that for Gala tokens is expected to get even higher because now they have announced new features in the game as well, which is the option to upgrade your digger. So your digger that is mining can um, mine Gala tokens even more effectively, uh, which will probably, and this whole upgrade feature will probably be using the game currency, which is Gala tokens. So currency, as we know, is affected by demand. Okay, one way of having more demand is to use it more. This is the most common way because the more you use it, the higher the demand. And that's why we always examine token use in any project. In this particular case, Gala tokens not only has use case um, to buy miners and to uh, buy planets, but the limited features of the game itself, that means the, the limited number of planets, will also create a demand, meaning that planets will potentially cost more and more tokens as more and more people want to own a planet. And, and I think that people will want to own a planet because it's basically a source of passive income. You could stake your ZPIN tokens and get Gala tokens, but that will be a, a lot less than actually owning a planet and staking your ZPIN tokens on the planet. So I'm really looking forward to checking out the numbers in their new white paper about how the, the, the whole ratio between ZPIN tokens and Gala tokens and how much you would earn uh, the return of interest from this whole endeavor will be. Now, I don't usually do a follow-up video after I review a project just because there's so many other projects to review. But in this case of ZPIN, I will be personally following up on this project for my own interest. So if you would like me to do a follow-up video uh, when the details of the white paper come out, just let me know in the comments below. And if there's enough requests, I will do a follow-up video as well. Coming back to just ZPIN as a project, ZPIN will also introduce what is known as a credit score to incentivize positive content and behavior on the platform. So a user's credit score will be affected by the following factors. Firstly, it will be affected by the frequency of participation in community activities. Secondly, it will be affected by the quantity of works or copyrights done. Thirdly, affected by their transaction volume on Z rights. Fourthly, it will be affected by how much they help to promote and sell crowdfunding products. And finally, it will be affected by their participation in Z create creative project. So users with a positive credit score will be rewarded with incentives such as free ZPT tokens issued every year by the foundation. These are their partners. Um, the first three partners are familiar names. They are Neo, Ontology, and OnChain. So OnChain, as many of you would know, is the mother company behind Neo. Uh, they run the technology of Neo. And Neo itself is the eco is the center of the whole Neo ecosystem, on which many other great projects like Ontology, Switch Neo, ZPIN, and the rest are part of. Ontology is actually the closest partner to ZPIN. In fact, ZPIN's mainnet blockchain structure is apparently modeled after Ontology's blockchain structure rather than NEO. So the NEO ecosystem, in my opinion, is one of the strongest ecosystem in the place. There is a lot of relevance and partnerships within the projects of the ecosystem, and there are also a lot of very good projects in the ecosystem. It's an ecosystem with a very good reputation currently. The community is also very strong and a lot of the projects will gain a lot of traction when there is uh, good news, for example, mainnet coming up. Also, with investing into projects early, um, and uh, when I mean early, I mean uh, investing into projects before the mainnet is launched, the danger is that there is always a risk that the project will not be able to take off. For example, like EOS recently, a lot of people jumped into EOS before mainnet was launched. And you know, since mainnet until now, there's been um, just problem after problem with the project. So it's a risk that you take when we invest into projects before mainnet launch. That's why um, more established platforms like Ethereum, who currently already have a lot of working products and business, tends to be a much safer investment. But 
it's investing in the early projects that haven't had a mainnet launch yet that potentially will give you a higher return. So it's basically high risk for high gains. But in Zpin's case though, the two major risks of investing into Zpin in such an early phase is one, their market penetration, whether or not they can penetrate into the creative industry market. And the second is whether or not they can actually produce a working blockchain technology. Now, in terms of their product having market penetration, I feel that it's most likely to succeed because they are basically arting 365, the same team, the same project. It's just that they are changing over to a blockchain model. They already have over a million users. They already have the same context in the industry that they've been establishing for the last 50 years. So I feel that this is a project that has a very good chance of having market penetration. In terms of having uh, their technology as a workable product, even though their mainnet is not launched yet, their testnet has been out since April. They are modeled after ontology mainnet and we know that the ontology mainnet is working very well. They also already have a working game called Crypto Galaxy, which is functioning well on their testnet. So the chance of their platform working well at launch is high. So these types of considerations um, significantly lower the risk of investing in a project for a token investor like myself. So this is not financial advice. This is just me sharing my thought process with you. Furthermore, if you look at their partnerships, there are two capital investment firms that are also invested in them. And as I always say, capital firms investing in a project is good news because these are professional investors who are very, very thorough in doing their research. They are definitely more competent than me in their assessments. So if I see a capital investor invested in a project, it's a reassuring sign for me. Finally, the last thing that attracts my attention to Zpin right now is its current price point. So currently, Zpin token is sitting at 3.5 cents, which is extremely cheap. Let me show you something called the return of interest to show you how cheap this project currently really is and why I'm quite excited about this project. Recently in the bear market, in my attempt to try and sieve out which are the small cap coins that are really worth paying attention to, I've been paying attention to this one feature called the return of interest or ROI. So on Coin Codex, which is the website I use to check pricing, the ROI is listed at the bottom left corner of the table just under the chart. On this page, you can see it just there in the red color wordings that says minus 70%. Now, most good coins with good fundamentals will have a positive return of interest. Big coins that are established, for example, Ethereum and NEO, they have already um, return of interest over 100,000%. Okay, 100,000%, that's huge. So basically, if you got into these projects at ICO, that's the percentage gains that you would have gained by holding the coin until now, over 100,000%. Even new coins that have very good fundamentals like Ontology have seen over 2,200% 2, return of interest. So this is all very big positive numbers. In fact, if you were to look, most crypto projects on the market currently actually have a positive ROI despite a bear market. This means that most projects on the market, even in the bear market like now, they are still sitting above their ICO price. If it's a big project like Ethereum, and Ethereum has a massive return of interest of over 148,000%, okay? Um, because the ROI is already so big, I don't expect Ethereum to go up 50X or 100X over the next one to two years. I believe that Ethereum will still go up in price, but I don't think it will go up another 50 times, okay? So what I've been trying to look for in this bear market is to look for coins that have very good fundamentals that I can believe in, but yet have a red ROI, meaning that they are priced um, very, very cheap um, subjectively. And it's actually been surprisingly hard to find a good coin with good fundamentals with a red ROI, even in the bear market. But I found Zpin. Now, Zpin, for all the points that I mentioned above, I feel that it's a project with very good fundamentals. And currently, if you see on the screen, its ROI is minus 70%. So it's not just negative in 10 or 20%, it's minus 70%. So that's crazy. It's 70% less than its ICO price. Very few good coins actually drop below ICO price. And I will be happy, actually, if for any negative kind of uh, ROI, even if it was minus 10 or minus 20%, that would have caught my attention. 
minus 70% is just really very attractive to me. So a project like this, right, when I look at uh, Zpin, they are they really come from a very established successful companies of over 15 years history with over 1.2 million users. This is a multi-trillion dollar industry and Zpin is one of the most well-known or prominent projects in the NEO ecosystem because they were one of the first steps on the NEO ecosystem. And Furthermore, their upcoming news over the next month in the month of August will include mainnet launch and staking options. So I personally think that currently right now before the masses are aware of the staking because the actual numbers are not out yet, but uh, what we know is a feature that will happen. But before, once the numbers come out and people start shilling it, that's when the masses are really going to kind of um, uh, pay attention to Zpin and jump on. So I think that right now, um, getting into Zpin at such a low market cap of only 17.4 million um, is very, very attractive. If you were to do the mathematics, getting into Zpin at the current price of 3.5 cents is the equivalent of getting into NEO at the price of 30 cents. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just, I think it's getting in very early into a very good project. So once again, please, this is not professional advice. This is just me sharing my thoughts with you. This whole channel and my reviews are more like a personal blog to me on my own journey with crypto. None of this is financial advice, so please always do your own research and make your own decisions. So guys, that's it for me. That's why I really like Zpin at the price point right now. So thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of Zpin. And also let me know if you would like me to do a follow-up video once all the details come out. Depending on the market, I think that the price could potentially start rising even before mainnet launch. That means once they announce the next white paper and the numbers of the staking, I think that that's when it will begin to gain a lot of attention and the price will begin to rise. And that's why I wanted to get this video out now um, before the masses. Give us that like if you like this video. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do give us that subscribe as well. And my apologies again in advance that I will be a bit slow in churning out these videos over the next few weeks because of my new job. But I promise that I will still make videos when I find something that excites me like today. And I also promise you that my content will always have quality if not necessarily quantity for the next few weeks. Finally, do consider joining our Telegram chat. The guys on our chat are simply awesome. I learned so much from them and their discussions. And if you do enjoy our reviews, you will also enjoy the Telegram group chat because it's the same crowd of people who are investors that are serious about finding the really good projects with good fundamentals out there. That's it for me, guys. Have a fantastic Friday. Have a fantastic weekend wherever you are, and I'll catch you guys again very soon.